Derde hasretin var Yürekler aşkınla çarpar Sensiz dünya bizlere dar Selam sana ey kutlu yar We submission, faith and patience You convey the noble message Brought the light through your guidance Peace be upon you, my beloved Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad Ya Nabi, salam alayka Ya Rasul, salam alayka Ya Habib, salam alayka Salawatullah alayka Ya Nabi, salam alayka Ya Rasul, salam alayka Ya Habib, salam alayka Salawatullah alayka Habbat ki mehek se Ye zemin o asma abad hai Rahmat ki barsat ati hai Dil o jah ya rasul Allah Ayyuhal mukhtar o fina Zadan al hubbu hanina Jitana bil khayri dina Ya khitam al mursalina Ya habibi ya muhammad Ya nabi salam alayka Ya rasul salam alayka Ya habib salam alayka Salawatullah alayka Ya nabi salam alayka Ya Rasul, salam alayka Ya Habib, salam alayka Salawatullah alayka
love with Dr. Yan. Uh, we like to encourage the young generation to come join us because inshallah one day they will be fine with us as well. Inshallah. I would like to uh, officially welcome everyone to the head seminar. Uh, we are fine now, inshallah, everything is confirmed. Both we have everyone's visas as well. So alhamdulillah, this is a very big step that we have managed for everyone because there was a lot of issues going through the embassies of this year. Just a little bit of background of our travel agency and where the welcome is coming from. It's a family-based travel agency. Uh, me, Oes Mustafa, uh, my father, Ziaul Mustafa, uh, my sister works, we have uh, Amara Mustafa, we have sister Ibra here, and then my auntie and my mum. So it's a family-based travel agency, so you, are, you should be proud that you are joining another family. That's how we, uh, we like to welcome you. So Alhamdulillah, you are joining another family and we are very proud, I'm proud of standing here that I have now 124 members of my family. So I have a very big extended family now, Inshallah. The journey of Hajj is something, I mean, everyone goes on holidays, everyone travels back to where they come from. But the Hajj journey is something that will leave a permanent scar in your brain, in your mind, that will be very difficult to erase. It's something that you remember in the years to come. So we need to make sure that as we are traveling, alhamdulillah, we have we've been trapped, it's not our first head group, so we've been there are these people find with us who have blood cancer. So we need to be aware of everyone's uh, nature because this might be our last journey. So we are blessed, alhamdulillah, to be fine out on one of the best journeys that person can So the inshallah we'll be talking about the board this day. I would just like to move on give you a quick brief on to what we'll be covering today and don't panic if you can't find it, 124 of them but you are there so that's why you're invited there so we are everyone's name is on the list but if you could even just so uh, you won't find it on the list but however uh, you would like I would like you to check the numbers and uh, rem remember those numbers just a quick quick issue it's not like we don't want to remember you by your name inshallah I will try to remember the money Names as I can. While I'd like to stop here and just want to inform you that I am flying out, inshallah, with you, and my father's flying out with you as well. So, just in case you're thinking he's just going to do a presentation and disappear, it's not going to be like that. So, inshallah, I'm flying out with you, and then my father's flying out with us as well. And we will be with you till the 13th of October as well. So, we are completely coming, coming with you on the 26th, flying out on the same flight, and then all the way to the 13th of October, we are 100% with you. You will have our local numbers. You, you will, we will talk about that in the future. Regarding those numbers, uh, we have everyone's uh, passport here with us, which we will be giving out at the end. So that's why these, uh, everything here on the right hand side is labeled, so it's just by number. Rather than pulling everyone's name out, everyone can come to the table and collect all their passports and every, all the details that will take what's included in the package later on. So it will be easier rather than meeting the rush here. So obviously we started with a recitation of the Quran and then I've just had the introduction. Uh, inshallah we'll be going to uh, Fazali Hajj and then we'll go for Zahar Salah. Uh, regarding Zahar Salah, we have uh, made arrangements here. With us, with our motto is ladies come first for us. So we have to remember that ladies for us in our uh, businesses first. So what we do is we have uh, got board number one, room number one for the women for prayer and then for the men is number two. The reason they this first because when we be getting the bus in my guess, a lot of you will not be aware of um, how are we travelling, where we are going, from the journey from home to the airport, then from the airport to the, the uh, Jeddah terminal, then from Jeddah to Makkah, and then from Makkah we will be going to Jeddah Kurmara. After that, we will be having regular meetings and I would like everyone to have a little two minute break, uh, help yourself with the smoke bit because we get cold, and have a couple of drinks, and then we we'll come back to the virtues of lunch.
The invitation is from the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are going on our own. So when we are flying out, we have to remember we are nothing. Because we are going to be the Lord. So why are we in front of him? You could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a policeman. You could be a banker, you could have all the wealth you have around you. But today, when we will, when we will fly out to Saudi Arabia, Makkah, Makarba, when we see the Kaaba for the first time, this is when our reality will come to us. We are nothing. We are nothing. I'm dressed in a suit today. Everyone's outside very well, very nice. Everyone's dressed nicely. But when we be in front of the Lord, for the men, we are just going to be wearing two white clothes. That's what we are. That's what we are. That's, that's the reality check I want everyone to have today. Because the standard that we're going to have in the next is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we're going to achieve. This is our goal. You can go a hundred times. But the main, there's only one Hajj that is going to be accepted. So we will walk in five minutes. If our hotel was 15, 20 minutes away, by the time you get to Hadam, you'll be tired because of the heat. So this would be a distraction for you to making your prayers. Because you'll be tired, so you need to be fresh. So that's why you've paid for these kind of luxuries and comfort. To make sure that when you're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're fresh. Your mind is just on the deal. So that's why we have managed, you have given us the responsibility. And you have given us a very big responsibility to make sure that we deliver these standards to you. That's what we're going to see in the future, the peaceness of the religion. That, and this is one pillar, the last pillar. Had maybe, I mean, we've read the uh, Qadma, we do our Zakat, we do our Ramadan every year. But Hajj comes once in a life, we don't know who's going to live next year. So we need to make sure we make the most out of this. And by, we make the most out of this by looking out, uh, blowing out the standards and looking after one another. The Prophet said that Hajj is Magroon. So this is where the beginning comes out. Hajj has to be accepted, so this is our aim, this is our goal. That they accept, if it's accepted to Allah's courtyard, there's nothing less but in paradise. And I guess this is what our aim as a Muslim is. That we are planning to go to paradise, inshallah. And let's pray that we all go as a family again. That we recognize each other. Because <laughs> on the day of judgment, it will be very difficult to recognize even your parents. So, I would like to remind you, I'm sure everyone's aware, we are going to Arafat one day. In Arafat, it's going to be the day of judgment. This is where everyone's going to get descended onto on the day of judgment. So, oh, is that Luya? No, we wouldn't. Because it's, so this is how Qiyamah is going to be. So, imagine how Qiyamah is going to be. It's going to be so difficult for us. So, we are just getting a snapshot. Maybe it was too much for us to handle, which is the Arafat day. So, that's why it had to only have. Maybe seven, eight hours in Arafat. And then that was the mind. And we are leaving all this comfort behind us. I'm sure, I mean, I don't see any pair of kids here. So, inshallah, when we are being invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, He will give us shifa. Inshallah, He will give us forgiveness. That's what we're going to see. And the Talib is with us, uh, he's a cancer patient. The day he walked into my office, he goes, I want to go. And I said, Inshallah, you go. And he's still a bit worried how I'm going to do Hajj. And I said to him, This was my word, Hajj. Good and Mabrur, Inshallah. The Hajj and Mabrur sometimes later on, if you know when you come back, there's a changed person. Because Hajj, forgive us all. But it's, it's our wish, it's human nature. We have to wait for less than close or physically. We're just finding close to the God physically. But what we need to remember is, we're we going there physically. How many people have been pushed? How many people, how many days did we end up watching or jumping over? So we need to make sure that we keep our humbleness inside us. Because the place we are going to is the center of the earth. Inshallah, inshallah, I believe myself, it's your nature. Yes, you have to do your good deeds. Yes, you have to have some actions. But the nature plays a big part in making you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you feel, how clean your heart is for others. So we need to make sure that we are really uh, focusing on these little points. There's many things I can do with Hajj that you would have. As I mentioned, like any trip, there's always a possibility that you may go always 
uh, go according to plan. So we might not be flying on time. Uh, we're not, uh, we might not be, we might have a lot of delays. Because now I'd like to remind you here, we mentioned that I would like everyone to be here for one o'clock. People got delayed. So I'm not going to blame everyone why I haven't come late. Everyone has their little bits about maybe they left five minutes late, maybe they were stuck in traffic. It's the same there. It's the same in Saudi Arabia. So we will have a lot of delays. You have to remember if we are going on the um, M25, if we, are, if we all decide to go to the airport today, just now, we will cause a bit of congestion. So you have to remember, you're not the only one who's gone there for Hajj. There's millions of people around you. Yes, you can't see them, because we don't have an view shot. If you type in Google and have a look at the amount of people that you see Hajj, you will be surprised. So the Saudi Arabian government has a very good, to my eyes, they have a very good uh, system, the way I see it. Because managing, for me, for us to manage everybody, for I people, I know how difficult that becomes. So managing millions of people is a very difficult task. But they play a very good role in managing everything goes out on time. The other problem is, so these are the problems that we come across. We have to be patient. This is the thing that Hajj will teach us, patience. Maybe now people are more patient. I like getting my things done straight away. But when, inshallah, we come back from Hajj, we'll have a change in us. These are the changes we're looking for, patience. And patience pays, pays a lot of virtues. So we should be, uh, then again, as I'm, uh, I'd just like to recap on some little bits again, because uh, I guess some people came late, that we are traveling as a group. Yes, we didn't choose to travel as a group. We didn't I didn't choose to travel in the right? but we've been chosen to travel as a group now. <coughs> so we need to make sure we are looking after one another. As I mentioned, it's me and my father and my family that runs this business. So you are joining a bigger family. And I'm proud of standing here and saying, I've oh, got wow, 124 people added onto my family. So mutual responsibility is really important as well. We have to work as a group. We have to look after each other. Inshallah, maybe you don't know. I might give a glass of zamzam to one person. That would be the way of my hajj being makroom. Maybe I'm in hell and some lady comes to me saying, oh, I've lost my hotel, can you guide me? Maybe that is that action, that deep is going to make my hajj makroom. Maybe we're doing this tawaf, going to the jamara, doing sa'i. Maybe that's not accepted. But the only reason why I had maybe got accepted was because I looked after someone. Or maybe I just helped them climb up the stairs. Maybe I helped them with the luggage. So this is my belief as well. So I make sure I... I mean, it's not that you will see me at the internal of this. I will try to make sure I'm looking after everyone here. But I go out of my way personally, helping others as well. And that's how our character should be for this journey and the after the journey when we come back as well. So we need a lot of character change. I'm not judging everyone saying no one's got a character here, no one has a personality here. But every day we learn something new. Today I've learned something new. Today you're learning something new. Maybe all the lot of people are older than me here sitting here. But they are learning something new. So every day we learn something new. So we need to make sure we change our character. I mean, we can never be perfect. We're not angels, we're human beings. To the day I die, I'm not going to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. So we need to make sure the character is really kept in mind how are we behaving with others. Because there's a lot of now, uh, let's move on. Uh, we've had a little discussion on where the journey is, the importance of the journey, what we're going for. The next part that's coming is how we're going to fly. So I would, uh, it will all inshallah flow together. So we're now talking about how at the airport, we are going to go at the airport and how are we going to manage things from there. So I would like to take you on a virtual journey of Saudi Arabia now. Inshallah. Okay. We are uh, planning, uh, if, if people may be making notes, just, I'm just wondering, we don't need to make any notes regarding the flight and everything. Everything is written. So uh, Inshallah, what I would like to do actually is, we should start giving out these uh, welcome letters to you. So you, the information is in front of you, and then I can tell you what the, uh, all the documents have. If everyone could have a look at the list of numbers, so whatever their number is, and then we can, one table by table, uh, collect our bags, and then bring them back to your table. People who cannot walk, or it's difficult for them to walk, or even the ladies can stay seated. So remember, ladies always come first. We can have the ladies. 
Okay, the numbers at the top are, for example, uh, zero numbers. So two, uh, 10, 11, 12, for example, is going to the number. Signed. So in case anything goes wrong, 
you are aware of your rights and anything that goes wrong. Now, the next document that you will see onto your folder is around the confirmation. The reason we are giving you all this is because life is short. I could pass away, my father could pass away. But we've left. We want to make sure that this lifetime of a journey for you is completed. So inshallah, I'm just saying, if you fly out on your own, you have everything that you need to complete your hajj. So, yes, you are reliant on us, but you don't have to rely on us. You can go with these documents and follow it, the process properly, and you won't have an issue on hajj. Jeddah Airport Direct, Saudi Airline. My suggested time... I think, yeah, sorry. My suggested time... Okay, the departure time is at 4 p.m. Terminal 4. My suggested time to everyone would be to get to the airport by 1 p.m. 1 p.m. 1 in the afternoon. And just like today, 1 o'clock, we come next week. Well, six days' time is meet again at 1 p.m. So I think one number one is going to be good for us. It sounds like a lucky number for us. So. Uh, we will be, uh, I suggest, uh, I know some people are flying out from Glasgow, some people are flying out from Luton, I mean, driving from Luton, so the, everyone knows their timing, how far they're from the airport, and then I'd like everyone, that's the main thing. If you forget your bag, but please don't forget your passport and your tickets, because these tickets are Hajj tickets, then it's very difficult to find you on another flight. So make sure before you leave, or the night before you pack your bags, you sleep with that passport back underneath the pillow. So at least you don't forget it. Okay, and then after that, uh, I will talk about coming back at the end. So we should be arriving at the airport, uh, which is at the airport, uh, Umrah after Fajr. Because before Fajr, a lot of people, I mean, uh, it's the first prayer of the day, a lot of people come in, we will be tired, really tired. Hajj is not difficult. This journey that we're going to do to Umrah is difficult. It drains you. Because you're flying from your home, then you're going to get home, then you're in the plane, make sure. Jet lag. Once we've done this, we would uh, we go out and we would land at 12 o'clock. And now, uh, let me just uh, briefly touch on what happens at the airport and terminal. So, as I said, just the airport, we landed at 12 o'clock. We're going to expect a long day, a very long day. Please, please, please. This is from past experience. Once we land and we come into the arrival area, I would suggest every we be worried then, because finding you is holding 100 people up. So you're more than welcome to go to the washroom, but please just tell us. Oh, we're not going to be busy enough for everyone. If someone said, I'll go to the toilet, so they are aware. I'll come back and ask, because me counting 125 people would take another 10 15 minutes. So we don't waste time. So if you inform people saying, okay, I'm going to the toilet, please don't worry about coming back in 5 10 minutes. Once we've uh, landed at the airport, we've got our luggage. And we will be taken to our Maktab number, where they will give us stickers uh, and Hajj drafts. We haven't got your Hajj drafts for you at this particular time with you. We should have, but we haven't. Inshallah, Monday, tomorrow we are getting our Hajj draft. So we will be giving you your Hajj draft at the airport. So then they will take your Hajj draft off you. It's going to be a payment voucher basically to say you're paying for the buses that we are going to be going on to. So you're going to be giving those hundred vouchers to uh, a desk there. Don't worry if they take a passport off you and say, oh, we didn't know you. Don't. So if someone is asking for your passport at that particular desk, please give it to them. We have people, oh, we're not going to give our passport. They want to give our passport away. So we have this argument going on sometimes there as well. So please, if they're asking for your passport, they're asking for a reason, they will put your sticker on and they will give it back to you again. So keep your passports with you all the time. This is your main document. We don't want to have these because the passports and luggage, losing luggage at the airport and passports is, is finding the needle in the haystack. So please make sure you look after your belongings as well. We'll be there to look after you. We'll be looking after you, but I'd like people to look after themselves first. After we have put in onto the bus towards uh, Makkah, as I mentioned, it's a one hour journey. However, because they like to control the immigration, for any country having a million, a million people migrating to their country illegally every year, because it becomes difficult for that country as well, uh, that country to operate as well. So hence, they will they take our passports off us. There's no other reason. So we don't 
we can't illegal immigrants in their country. Yes, we have plenty of jobs back here, but people who come from poorer countries, they like to make a good living, so they stay out in Saudi Arabia after as well. So this is the reason they will take passports off you and they will give us a ban, or they will tell, they will, they will give us a receipt saying our passports are in this office with a card. So we will be going through many health welcome centers. They are provided by the uh, Saudi government. You go in and you say, room 201. They will give you the keys, you will go to your room and stay there. I mean, to, so you can make yourself comfortable. Please carry your luggage with you as much as you can in one lift with the same goal. Because there will be 125 pieces uh, people's luggage. I can imagine that will be 300 pieces of luggage. So that would fill out the reception room. So take as much luggage as you can with important documents with you. Leave your big suitcases down. Sorry, same card. Card. So on now this Saudi SIM card is linked with your numbers. So for example, just say I'm number one. The, no, the SIM card that's inside at the top is for the person who's number one. Then if someone else is number two, the, the uh, SIM card below is for number two. Uh, yes, uh, your numbers don't match up, don't worry about the numbers. Because the person who knew these numbers was, he didn't even buy all the SIM card, I'll make sure they match. Yeah? So don't worry about the SIM card numbers. But they are related to you. Okay, we don't have your numbers at the moment because the SIM are going to be activated as soon as you put them in your SIM. Uh, your, sorry, your phone. So, I have a list made with everyone's name on there. So you know, it's again serial number, so for example, number one, Dali uh, Hussain. I would like you to give us your number. We will have this list into the lifts. So if, for example, I find something that belongs to another brother, I can I just bring it, I get his number, say, okay, bro, you've left your glasses here, or you left your luggage here, or oh, you told me to bring Zamzam for you, I bought you Zamzam for you. Let's go out for a meal, you know, you can, it, it's been a good social uh, time to spend, because you can go out together to eat a little bit. Talk about food, you have food as well anyway. So, but yeah, you can socialize. So you, you, you need to look after one another. So the SIM cards are in there. There's rucksack bags, as you can see, with, with the logos in there, that's for you. You can take these to Haram with you, they come very handy. All these things that we have designed is from our past experience, the things that we would need. So the rucksack is not just you read Quran there. So we don't know where, when you're in the room and you're not. So it's good to look after one another, ask them if there are things around you. People, your neighbors, your neighbor rooms is good. Islamically, you have to check on our neighbors anyway. <laughs> so please make sure you check on your neighbors. So you have, uh, that you're okay. Maybe even make a partnership with your neighbors. Saying, okay, let's go home together. You, this is the journey we will enjoy. Going together. The togetherness of this journey makes us, this journey very beautiful. For me, personally, the togetherness that it brings in us, uh, that's the best part of our life, about this journey. Okay, uh, then moving on to the health checklist, if you need insurance, if you will take, I would advise you not to take valuables, take less money, because the more money you are going to take, the more shopping you're going to end up doing. So, save some money for yourself as well. Uh, so, but anyway, talking about uh, come to stuff, protection, so if you want to, uh, you can get your valuables insured. Talking about insurance, your package is protected by Ayatan Atom. If we go bust today, you will still fly out. Because the money you've given to us is perfect for you. So these uh, maps will inshallah make you and help you follow uh, your, your way as well. We will give you card. Okay, then one more thing. We need to make sure we take a card from the reception in case you get lost. You can uh, show them the way. You can ask someone where is this particular place or this hotel. I forgot one more thing, which is the ID cards that you have in there, I'm sure. With that, again, you will have your serial number, your name, your passport number, in case. May Allah keep everyone healthy and well. You collapse, because that person did collapse with Haram. And you have no ID with you, because there's exhaustion there. And when you're doing Tawar, it's humility there, because the people that are doing Tawar, it's Allah. So make sure, you, before you go to Tawar, you're fueled up with water. Because it drains you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. On the transport details, it says from Mina to Makkah is by walk. What about people who are not able to walk? Uh, is there any provisions for them? Okay, people who are not.
right? That this, uh, as a group, we can decide. So maybe our family, our Indian myself, and as I mentioned, we as a group can, at all the spot, we can decide on the, uh, the taxi. That mean to my That's going to be a difficult But it's like, uh, it's, it's going to be very difficult. You, you find a taxi, no problem. Hina? No. No. What about the when we went to Arafat from Mina? What time? Because sometimes the, the, the people come down at midnight and say, okay, we're ready to get ready. From Arafat to? From Mina to Arafat. Because we, we are going to... Okay, from Mina to Arafat. Uh, uh, from Mina to Arafat. If you have a... Uh, uh, is there anything else that's missing now? <laughs> You're missing now. We shall have to wait, so Now it's coming up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This wheelchair is uh, through the airport journey or for Tawaf? Uh, just for the, the, for the days of Hajj. For the days of Hajj, yes. Again, you can, we can arrange something for you. If you say, I need a wheelchair for Hajj days, we can arrange something for you. And then the person who is going to be pushing the wheelchair, he will be asking the price for pushing that, so we can arrange something for you there. And it's something you, we can arrange in the spot in Charlotte. It's not something that you need to bring up. Friday. Yes, I know the Friday prayer. Is there any arrangement at the airport? Okay, yeah. We had uh, someone else asking that question before as well. And we're glad that we come on this as well. The Friday prayer. Well, I'm suggesting the Friday prayer is at well, 2 o'clock, let's say. I'm suggesting everyone comes at the airport for 1 o'clock. I'm sure we're not going to be able to realistically, let's talk about realistically, we're not going to be able to have, find a prayer room at the airport for just say 40, 80 men. So how are we going to pray? That's an issue. Yes, so uh, we need to, we will have to make some arrangements ourselves, or if we want to pray in 10, 20s, there's going to be no arrangement at the airport. It's a very small place. It's a very airport, small airport. Airport. prayer room. Maybe 10. 10 people. 10 in one go. That's so it. So how are we, you know, there are some uh, compromises we're going to have to make. <coughs> and again, we are going to see some, just before we start moving along, because then we'll get food out the moment. Yes. Sorry. Uh, is it possible to steal our own Qurbani on the day of Hajj? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, this question, before we fly out, before we hit the Miqat. So here there's two options. One, you can wear your ihram from home before you leave to the airport. You can change your ihram at the airport as well. If you want, if you're comfortable with the cleanliness around you, you can change the ihram into the plane. But remember, if you're with everyone, there's going to be more people like us saying, oh, we just change up the plane so we just relax and comfortable. <coughs> but the plane got a cut in here. I mean, here I've tried rather than putting my advertisement on, I didn't want to do that. So I just went for more informative instructions. So the recommended acts before putting your ihram on, conditions imposed while in the ihram, uh, what is prohibited in the ihram. But this is not 100% all you need to know. There's more than this. But these are the basic things that I think that you would need to know before putting your ihram on. And then obviously, once entered into the state of ihram, what you need to do is that we are how to wear your ihram. How, uh, okay, I wanted to do this, which I've forgotten. I would like everyone, inshallah, to do this as well. We need to keep our nature simple as well. We need to forget about everything that's around us and be focused on these things. I personally prefer when I go out to Saudi Arabia, like switching my phone off because I'd like to know what's happening here. Some guys might not have to do these things, it's easier for them to do it. So there's no specific way that you have to do it this way. It's any way you don't feel comfortable with and as long as it's fasting enough properly, there's no issue. Okay, so this is how I would do it. I use my legs open, the white spelt, bring one in, second one out, done, fold it like this, and your arm is done. Then I normally use this, but obviously you can have the belt, so you can put the belt around and then fold this in. Yeah? Okay. Make sure your Saturday order is covered. That's an Arabic term. I will explain that. From your belly button, take enough money with you, so when you come, even if you do get paid pockets, you're not disappointed that you're not part of your else. So this is the bottom part of uh, the ihram. Now, uh, the second cloth that we just head here, again, simply you just open it. And then, you would, and then you would just wrap this around uh, your body. Because obviously, all right, you, just one reminder, I know everyone will be aware, but just, just to make sure, you shouldn't have anything underneath for the guys. 
that you're not wearing your vest, you're not wearing your shirt. Obviously, I don't want to wear it again, but you will have nothing underneath. So you would wrap this around like this, and then just fold it over. So here your helm is ready. You're already your helm. Regarding slippers, which now, regarding slippers, you need to have your full porch if you're being exposed. I personally prefer uh, flip-flops, and the flip-flops I prefer is from Aldo. This is me personally. I like to, they are a bit 30 pounds, but you're walking for five days in those slippers. You don't want to buy cheap slippers from there because they give you sore, and then you get all these problems with your feet. And your main companion in this journey is your feet. So you need to look after your feet. So make sure you buy some slippers which are comfortable. So please be sure. This is my suggestion to just briefly touch on how we need to have the ihram. We will be telling you this step by step anyway. But this is just how we really are traveling. But once we get into the space of uh, the and then we are just about to be tawaf, the first tawaf uh, we are going to do, we need to expose our right shoulder. So I will just quickly and briefly explain to you how, how we expose our right shoulder. It's not very hard or difficult. All it is, you will strap this around like this and it's like this. So my right shoulder now is exposed. This is how you have to have your ihram when you do it tawaf. And then after you finish it one, uh, we will do two the of the Maqam Ibrahim, we will drink plenty of Zamzam, and then back again when you're doing say, you have to have your arm like this. I've realized a lot of the guys, when they didn't say they really have to be careful, you have to be considerate of other people as well. Yeah, you can say, yeah, so what? People are coming over, you have to realize that there are a lot of people around you, so you need to make sure when you're doing say, you cover yourself properly. There's nothing, no, not your body's not ex being exposed. Not you don't realize these things because you're tired. Shaitan is only there as well. Even though it's masjid, there's shaitan there as well. So you have to be really careful of how we are putting ourselves forward as a Muslim. And how we going to move forward. So I guess the ihram is complete. Is everyone happy with the way I've shown the ihram? But this is not the way you have to do it. You can do it your way. Maybe some people are thinking tired, not in front. So it's, it's your way. But this is how I think. I'm putting my arm on taking Okay, so once we've done the uh, if people would like to do it individually, we have no issues. As long as you're comfortable, we want you to be comfortable around us. So if you say to us, oh, we don't know, can you go? We'll say, after Fajr, we are going for Umrah. People who are here, we will go. People who are not here, they will have to no come for dinner, don't come for lunch, don't come for breakfast, no problem, bring us. Tell us, we're having problems, or we've got this issue, bring us. Or you'll probably see us somewhere in the corridor, you can meet us. If you don't see us, you haven't seen us for a while, don't panic. Don't. As we say, we will have a lot of difficulties and troubles. But we are always with you. Ask us if you're unsure. Inform us if you're not feeling well. We are here to guide you. We aim to provide you with the facilities for us to help. As I mentioned before, we are more worried than you. But we need to get you there before we be there ourselves. So we will be putting the necessary pressure on us to make sure we have to make sure the bus is there. We will probably be running around up and down the street just to make sure the bus comes outside. Because the problem is where our hotel is, in such a prime location, it is very difficult for the buses to come through. That's one problem of being inside Haram. Because in the last time they closed the roads. And the roadway on that closed up. Once you will go, you will see the amount of people that are dealing with people friends they have time. But then, it's, that delay is just for one day, but we're going to do that. At least you're not getting delayed praying. But this is the advantage. But the drawback is, our buses will get, it will be difficult to bring our buses back into Haram. On the day we will be going to dinner. So I will uh, discuss this uh, uh, later on in uh, Makkah and Shabbat. Moving forward, I need to remind you we are traveling together. And we are traveling for a great purpose. So let's help one another to achieve these goals. We need to be positive. People will be in. People will be feeling down. They might have headaches. Or they might have happened. They might have wore themselves out by two parts in a day. Let's encourage one another. Let's give them moral support. Personally, I would like it would be nice if people have a group of people going together. You have a chit chat on the way. You can do the work together. These are the memories. This her journey is a memory. I wish I had the time to write a book, I'll write a book that has all the experience. If people have, if some people are here would like to write, they should write, make an account on this, keep notes on this, 
Because when you come back to it, or the next year when people take part and have, and you look back at that book, it brings me back memories. So these are everything that we will be doing from the 26th with yeah. memories. So let's make good memories. Let's enjoy ourselves as well. While we travel, let's look out for one another. Let's keep the Talbiya by the well. The Talbiya is informing, the praying to Allah. The Lord coming. The way Allah is the way. I'm here with you, my Lord. But he's inviting us. We're getting the bait. Yes, we're coming. So this is should be the most proudest moment of our life when we uh, had Sahab blessed for it. We are a lot blessed. So we should be appreciating this journey a lot. Be very considerate about others in Haram. As I mentioned, you will see ladies or the gents, they will just sit in the park and wait, descend on the Prophet and pay his respects and salam. They will never ever get a chance in their lifetime to come again. Look at us. Where are we? Who are we? We are sinful people. What chance are you getting? You will be, uh, inshallah, three, four days in Medina. You thank you. Thank you. Welcome for coming Thank you very much.
لا شريك له جو حضرات الحمد لله یہ تشریف رکھے ہوئے ہیں ہم سب اس نیت سے ہم آئے ہیں کہ اللہ نے ہمیں بنایا ہے اور اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے اس زمین اور اسمان کو پیدا کرنے سے پہلے شروع کر محترم حاضرین آج جو ہم یہاں موجود ہیں اگر ہم یہ سوچے کہ ہمارے پاس پیسے ہیں ہمارے پاس جانے آنے کا سامان ہے ہمارے پاس تندرستی ہے ہمارے پاس ہم اور آپ کا مکتب جو ہے وہ تھرٹی ٹو ہے مکتب تھرٹی ٹو اب کچھ ساتھی جو ہے ہمارے ساتھ جو جا رہے ہیں وہ تھرو دی ایجنٹس آئیں گے ان حضرات کے لیے میری معتبانہ ریکویسٹ ہے کہ جنہوں نے ڈائریکٹ ہم سے پیکٹ بک کیا ہے آن لائن کیا ہے یا ہمیں جانتے تھے فون کر کے کیا ہے ان کو ہم نے اپنے پیکٹ کے بارے میں اے ٹو زیڈ انفارم کیا ہے اگر کسی ایجنٹ نے میرے ایجنٹ نے یعنی جیسے کوئی ٹریول ایکس کے ساتھ آیا ہے پی ٹی کے ساتھ آیا ہے قبلہ کے ساتھ آیا ہے اس طرح کے جو لوگ ہمارے ساتھ آئے ہیں مہابہ المتین روم فور زیرو سکس مس سمیرہ سمیرہ نسا اینڈ سوفیا روم فور زیرو سیون مس بکیا رحیمہ لطیفہ اینڈ سفیا روم فور زیرو ایٹ مسٹر اینڈ مسیس ازہر روم فور زیرو نائن مسٹر سلاو دین مہین الاسلام اینڈ حفیظ روم فور ٹین مسٹر ندیم سابت اسحاق اینڈ جنگیر روم فائیو زیرو سکس مس خالد آمینہ اینڈ حنا روم فائیو زیرو سیون روم فائیو زیرو سیون Somebody had a confusion with the flight wise. Like I said, you are able to give you the wrong information. The flight is a four o'clock. The Muslims are sleeping back, I already said, people asking the same question again. I will be provided by morning. I already paid him. If anybody wants to take your own sleeping bag, buy your mind, you can. Inshallah, meet you 